we never intended on making money off this or making it into a product or submitting it to film festivals or having it on TV or any of that culture of recognition bullshit. We were just making something that was about people and trying to channel humanity through our lens and um, they're us. They're us, you know, they, they, they seem really strange and they seem really out there, but Oh, man, I watch this film and I, I feel like I see a little bit of myself in each one of these guys. If this is your first time listening, I want to welcome you. This is episode 003 of Doc This. Today we are talking to Sean Dunn, and I have to let you guys know up front that this might be one of the strongest interviews that I have done to date. All of his projects he's released straight to web with organic views totaling in the millions, which is not an easy accomplishment to do. Sean is the director of Oxiana, Cam Girls, American Jungle O, and the project that we are focusing on today florida man you know kind of what what brought about the idea to uh of the florida man um well it's actually a a a few things my producer and girlfriend Cass greener and i had uh we're we're really obsessed with florida and we find ourselves going down there once or twice a year to just you know kind of recharge and get inspiration because the people there are so raw one of our trips down there, we, we went with a, a screenwriter friend of ours, Billy Chu, and we were we were just wandering around aimlessly for a week. And we really decided then, like, we got to come back here and we got to make a documentary about th- these these people that are kind of just aimlessly drifting all over the place down here. It just seems to, it, it's probably going on everywhere, but maybe since the weather's so nice down there, one day um, Cass and I and um, the person who ended up being the camera operator on Florida Man, we all took mushrooms together, psychedelic mushrooms. And this idea really blossomed over the course of, of that trip and that evening and the subsequent uh, weeks. So um, really the idea for us with this one was how do we strip back our bullshit as filmmakers more and more so to the point where we can be vessels for these beautiful souls that, you know, otherwise probably would have flipped through, uh, slipped through the cracks. So um, we went down there with no agenda other than we'll shoot a little bit each day for 10 days and we'll come back and we'll try to put something together from it. And I honestly assumed when we got back, we were going to put together like a 10 or 15 minute short documentary and when we went down there and uh, we started doing this it was it was very clear that that wasn't going to be the case that this was a little bit of a bigger project and a little bit more of an experimental project and for a lot of reasons and yeah we we went through with it we went down there for 10 days and we we would go out we'd go out in two shifts we'd go out from about like 4 p.m 3 or 4 p.m till like maybe six or seven and then um we'd come home and smoke some weed and eat some food and go over the footage and then we'd go back out there for like a late night shift like 11 till two or three in the morning we really had no idea where we were or where we were shooting we were just driving around our only goal was to make it to the next airbnb so each every two days we were switching airbnbs the, the only thing that was grounding us whatsoever was was this idea that we needed to make it to the, to the next airbnb but it was just an adventure, and um, we wanted it to play like that. I want to raise my hand for going on the next documentary with you guys. I, I swear to God that, <laughs> you know, just the experience of that sounds. Uh, and, and also, I mean, you know, kind of your tone for curating kind of uh, the people and kind of, kind of how you talk about them as, as kind of mm. souls. I mean, do you have, I'm curious to know, because... Uh, so many of those so many of those characters when you watch that you just opened up to you guys mm. and you know one where you have kind of two guys that were outside of a liquor store that looked like they're about ready to brawl over some money <laughs> you could see in the shot you could see the the, the audio guy and, and 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 you know you knew there was a crew there and yet they were yeah. so open i mean how do you approach a character i'm curious how do you approach a character like that like what, how, how do you just mm. kick off that conversation and then uh, then start rolling? Well, you know, Florida Man was like the first, uh, you know, I had all kinds of filmmaking documentarian tools for connecting with people. And Florida Man was one where, you know, you kind of got to use them all. And, and I was d- developing and trying out some new things. You know, in the past, it had been about me very much connecting with the subject to the point where they were distracted by me. 
where they were only connecting with me and they didn't even care if a camera or a microphone was there or, or whatever was going on. So that's, that's kind of uh, one of the tactics I had used leading up to Florida Man. But when we got there and the type of film we wanted to make, it wasn't really lending itself to, to me being just too much up in their face. Listen, each guy was different. Sometimes we would pull up to a location and there wouldn't be anyone around, but we had a feeling there would be. So we would just hang around with, with the boom mic out, with the camera out, making ourselves very noticeable. And sometimes people would just come over to us. And um, in those cases, it was really beautiful. We would just say, you know, you have any words of wisdom? And, you know, instead of me engaging with them and, and prompting them with further questions or eye contact or really trying to hold their attention, I would kind of be like, yeah, hey, throw us some words of wisdom. And I'd kind of turn away and really see more how they reacted to the camera and to this moment of being in the spotlight all of a sudden. And, you know, in, in, a, in a sense, we were drawing attention to attention to the filmmaking aspect of it and, you know, the weirdness of, of making documentaries and connecting with strangers and all that by doing this approach. And I think it was super effective because it was revealing. You know, it was more revealing of these people, whereas it could have been more revealing of what my agenda was since I didn't really have much of an agenda. It was like, OK, let's get a portrait of this person. And if they have anything to say, let's let them have their words. And I've said this before about this film, but the interactions you're seeing in in this film are pretty much the length of the interactions we had with these people. Like it would it, you're seeing it a lot of the time, it, you know, play out fully. We, when the camera cut, <laughs> we were gone after that. No one signed releases. We weren't doing any of that type of stuff. It was very much more on a human level because we never intended on making money off this or making it into a product or submitting it to film festivals or having it on TV or any of that culture of recognition bullshit. We were just making something that was about people and trying to channel humanity through our lens. And uh, they're us. They're us. You know, they, they, they seem really strange and they seem really out there, but... Oh, man, I watch this film and I, I feel like I see a little bit of myself in each one of these guys, <laughs> as scary as that is and as beautiful as that is. There's, oh man, that's powerful. I mean, there's there's two things that pop out the, out of what you said. One, the characters, and two, the culture of recognition. Powerful statement there. But before I talk about and ask a little bit more about your thoughts on that, the characters, you know, the guy that you picked up front that kind of opens and closes it, he sticks out for, I don't know if he sticks out because he's the first guy or because there was obvious kind of reasons. There was tension there. Yeah, yeah. And then the guy who threw the bike in the water, for some reason, he just kind of grabs <laughs> my mind. He's, he's one of... That situation might be the greatest thing I've been a part of, to tell you the truth. That, that clip, that moment, really, it sticks out to me. When we first filmed it, this has never happened to me before or since, but when we first filmed that, that moment where we're out on the pier with that guy and he's talking about how someone, someone's got to clean up this space here, someone's got to clean that wall, look at this, look at all this pollution, what the fuck is going on here? And then he throws his, his cigarette in there and he says, sorry for littering. And then he says, actually, you know what, by the way, check out what I did with my bike. And we, the camera goes down and, and we see that his bike has been down there. And you know, you kind of see him even like, he's like, he's like, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. That moment when we, we got back that night and we were watching it, that kept me awake for three nights straight. I would wake up laughing about the absurdity and the pure beauty of that moment and the honesty of that moment. I, it just more than anything I've shot that comes into my mind that that very strange interaction with that very stereotypical florida man out on on that pier in clearwater it was uh if it, it, it stuck with me i'd never had that before where where i'd wake up in the middle of the night thinking of something laughing uncontrollably about it and i was just so excited for people to see that and for for people to see that in context of all these other strange encounters we had and um you know to to your point the, that first guy that we have in the film the first frame of the film is is this guy squaring up against our our sound guy mike it, it was it was uh that was the last person we filmed 
for the for the entire project we called it a wrap after that one it was also the gnarliest guy we filmed you know <laughs> easily so uh yeah it really stood out to me and and you know that that guy really embodied what what being a florida man was was all about and that being like that being our last interaction is significant because there was no beginning or end to this project. It was just like what we decided. And, you know, that evening before we went out, we, we knew in our heads we needed to get like one last gnarly ass Florida man, you know, almost, you know, almost ultra violent style of Florida man. And we came across him. We saw this guy walking down the street. We pulled over. We walked up to him. He started talking to us. And in, in the middle of a sentence, he got fixated on, on fighting our sound guy. There was no tension before that or after it. He just liked fighting, like he says. I remember getting back to the edit with, with my beautiful editor and, and creative soulmate, Kathy Gatto. And she, um, she was like, okay, so how do we start this thing? And I was like, Phew. I already know the first clip. It's this guy. It's this guy squaring up against our sound guy. It's just too raw. It's too real. It'll hook the viewer. And it really kind of encapsulates what this whole trip felt like, kind of where you're just on the edge of your seat the whole time you're making this thing. I wanted the audience to feel that while they were watching it, like really immerse them in this, in this, in this fucking concrete neon crazy ass environment down there i want to respect the audience and by respecting them i mean respect their intelligence let them draw their own conclusions immerse them in a situation i know those are the films i like watching is when i have some space to react myself and to find the connections myself and it's not so spelled out for me this film was really an exercise in that in letting go of the idea of even having an agenda as a filmmaker and more just being like i'm a vessel i'm a vessel for for beautiful stories and beautiful subject matter I'm telling you, that's 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 good stuff there because I don't hear that a lot. I'm I'm curious. You, you know, you said the culture of recognition. That that's that's a big thing because it's a little bit of a conflict in our field because you you want people to see your work, you want people to appreciate your work, and it seems like lots of times the message is to do that. You need to be somebody of significance that they want to tune into. I mean. What are your thoughts on kind of or your approach to kind of getting your work out there and realizing that what's more important is is your work than you? It sounds like is kind of the message. I'm just curious, like, what are, what are your thoughts on how you mm. how you view that? Can you speak a little more? You know, I, I think I, I've been I did my first thing like eight or nine years ago now, a short film called The Archive. We've been putting out something every year. Or, or more than that, um, a, a thing or two or three or a year since then. And at the beginning, I did the whole film festival jag off and, you know, kind of heard people out and like, you know, what their little plan for my career and how to develop me. And it's funny. Everyone's always trying to get you to do narrative. Everyone's always like, but are you interested in scripts? And I don't know what the hell could someone write that's as interesting as what I'm coming across. You know, I, I did all that. I, I did the stuff with short films at the beginning and I saw it's total bullshit. And, you know, at least the festival world and this idea that help is on the way is is total bullshit. And for me, that was empowering. I said, OK, I could do this myself. I have the framework of the um, the do it yourself punk movement of of the late 70s and early 80s to kind of rely on. I'm a huge fan of, of that stuff. And I can kind of um, look to those guys and saw how how those bands did it and how those bands got recognition and built their artistic voices. And I don't know, none of it was happening because they were on the Grammys or because, you know, uh, they won this award or that award or anything like that. It happened because they were they were honoring their voices and people were picking up on that. And um, so I don't know. At some point shortly after um, we put out our first feature film, uh, Oxiana, in two, I think that was 2012. I said, okay, no more bullshit. We're going to invest in ourselves exclusively and the chunk of money that it would take to run around the world and have people pat us on our heads at film festivals, we could put into our next project. And all the time that I see filmmakers taking the year, two years, three years, going around with one project, getting pat on the head about it, we take that time and those resources and put it into the next project. And, um, you know, I, who knows how sustainable any of this is, but I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm not interested in art contests and, 
and awards and and recognition to tell you the truth i really just want people to see this stuff and connect with this subject matter in the same way i did and i think the way that you do that is by kind of shedding your own impurities when it comes to this stuff and really questioning to your core why you got into this and what it is you're doing and um, I see a lot of people unfortunately treating documentary as a career opportunity you know what's going to be the next move what's a, what what's going to be my next subject matter that's going to get people to notice this then then I can do this thing and then I can can do that and I, I don't know I've just never seen it as a career opportunity I've seen it as a a sacred medium because you're you're using real people and you're using their real words and you're trying to capture their essence i i just want to honor that and if i made if i made recognition and money any part of this it would come across in one in some shape or form i think that would come across it'd be really obvious to the audience and it would be obvious in the subject matter that I was pursuing, let alone how I was depicting it. And, and honestly, if anyone's listening to this and thinking about taking a similar path, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun not giving a fuck and watching everyone else spin their wheels about all the industry bullshit because none of it's real. It's all a goddamn illusion. Once you see through it, that's when the real work begins. That's when the real fun begins and that's where the real art can take place. And um, like I said, all we're trying to do is channel humanity and I just don't see how any of those other distractions help that cause. I'm telling you, man, this is powerful. Even for me, this is, this is powerful because um, I'm just loving hearing this right now. As this goes out there, and 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 I, I hope tons of people hear this because for me, I struggled with exactly what you're talking about, and I and it sounds to me like you're on the other side. I just ca- crossed the mm-hmm. bridge and been like, and kind of set my shit down for the last year, and been like, now what? Um, yeah. But I, and I also can, I, 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 you know, I couldn't put my finger on it, but when I watched your work, I, I was like there's something unique about this. There's something different uh, about this. And I, and I was like, Florida man really sucked me in. I, I started to watch cam. Is it cam girls? Yeah. Yeah. We put that at the same time. We'd put those, both those movies out at the same time, February. Yeah. Last year. And I was just like, there's something unique here. So uh, anyways, I, that th- doesn't really lead to a question. It's more of just a, a compliment. Well, I mean, I appreciate it. I mean, even, even that bit of recognition from you, it, it means a lot for me because otherwise the, the, the world I'm describing that we've created around our stuff, it can be like an echo chamber. Like we literally finish these things and the second they're finished, they're out there for the masses. They're not out there in some exclusionary film festival setting or some exclusionary theatrical setting they're in the setting of hey if you have a phone or a computer you can watch this stuff they're all out there for free all my films are for free on veryape.tv and the idea is to continue to put out the work for free and not expect to reach people unless you do and you know i'm not making the type of things that will really probably ever end up on netflix or hbo or any of those traditional ways of getting your film out there so i don't know i just got to kind of carve out a place of my own in this thing and the only way to do that is by having your work out there very very accessible and very free and so that's what we're able to do now this idea that there is there's a certain path and and here's what it is and it involves film festivals and and distributors and middlemen i don't know that's just becoming a thing of the past to me and and also just a giant distraction i i don't focus my whole existence on documentaries i've I focus on just kind of living a life of love and the documentaries are an expression of that. And honestly, they're an expression that I'm, I'm doing 5% of the time. So the rest of the time is, is me trying to figure out who the fuck I am and why I'm even doing these things and what I'm even trying to channel by doing them. Cause if you don't know that you don't really have a vision and that's where it can start to feel like a little bit of an uphill battle with some of this stuff. You know, I've seen that happen to many people. They just don't have, they don't have a strong vision for, for where they're taking their art or where they're taking a specific project and they can kind of flounder in that. I'm curious, you know, and I, I feel like I have to ask the question cause I feel like some people might be saying it like, how, how do you fund your projects? You know, if, if you know, I think a lot of people seek, mm. Okay, I, I totally get that. I'm on board with that. But how do I pay for the next one? I mean, do you have yeah. any uh, thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I do. I didn't bother ever trying to make a film until I had enough money to do it where there would be no one above me, where there wouldn't be a person where I had to run it by or get final approval on or what, or anything like that. So I didn't make my first film until I was 27 and I was working at History Channel at the time and the film cost me like $1,500 to make. So it wasn't like a, a massive investment. It, it was, uh, I, ma I made a short film and it cost $1,500 and I, I, I funded it because I was uh, a day rate producer at the History Channel doing promos. Actually, that first film got me commercial attention. So I was, I was working in the TV, in, in more of TV at History Channel, um, doing some stuff for HBO every now and then, different clients, but doing promos for their shows. When I made my first film, I started to get commercial attention. That's when real people commercials really started first coming on the map. And uh, I pursued that and I had some success commercially. And it, commercials are great because you only have to do a few a year and you, you know, you make a year's salary by only working for a month. So it was around then that I decided I'm only gonna really invest in myself. I'm not gonna, I don't own anything. I don't own a house. I don't, I don't pursue material objects or anything like that. I, I'm purely investing in in these art projects and the art project that is my existence. Yeah, I don't know. I, I work my ass off and when I save a little bit of money, I do them, but you know, they're, the, the short ones, they're small budgets. They're, they're very small budgets and we stay so scrappy and like I said, my girlfriend is my producer, so I don't know, we kind of look, we look at the bank account and we say, how, how much could we stretch this? And we're willing to go broke making these. And that's an exciting adventure to be on with somebody, to not be scared about, oh, what if we lost this apartment? Or what if we can't live in New York City? Or what if we can't have kids? Or what if, we, fuck it all, we're having a good time making this stuff and that's what we're, we're devoted to right now and that's what we're investing in. But w once the project started to get a little bigger, it, it became more of a challenge and it's, you know, it's something I'm still trying to figure out, but we, we did crowdfunding a couple of times. We raised $60,000 for Oxiana. We were able to make that and we raised 70,000 for cam girls. We were able to make that. We'll probably go back to crowd crowdfunding for the next one when it comes, when it comes to that time. But you know, honestly, it's, it's, it's really a scrappy approach and the approach of really, I'm not much, I'm not like into hoarding my resources and hoarding my money when I get it. It usually is an indicator that I can go make a project that was, that had been on my mind for a long time. And you know, Florida man's a great example of that. I, you know, we made that, we shot that in October, 2014. And I had had a very, very lean year barely any work that year and I think I had eight thousand dollars to my name and I spent it all on Florida man <laughs> and and it ended up it ended up working out because I put out these projects and people see them and they pass they pass them around and the love comes back to me and sometimes the love comes back to me in the form of people saying hey I want to hire you to make this uh, commercial or this corporate tape or whatever it's much appreciated and then you know I get to hone my skills behind the camera and get paid for it and then use the money that I got paid for for those projects to go make um, my personal artwork I mean a lot of what you're saying <laughs> makes complete sense with the value in giving back the value in creating value and not necessarily looking for a return and then you know and then and ultimately there is a return on the back end. I mean, that's, that's powerful. Yeah. That's faith, man. That's just faith. It's just saying, I'm going to spend my last bit of money to, um, to express myself in this way. And hopefully it comes back to me. And for, for me, you know, knock on wood, it's, it's continued to, and I don't know, I don't know how to ex explain that. And I want to keep doing this. So I hope it all, I hope it all keeps going this way because I do, I have a lot more ideas and I, I think I'm getting better at this. I feel like I'm, I'm really just starting to figure it out. Even though I've already made like 12 of these, I'm really just starting to figure it out and figure out what I'm all about and how to get that across. Uh, in increasingly interesting ways for for the audience. It's funny you say you think that you're getting better at these. I'm, I think that you're pretty good at them. I, uh, but on, on the fears, you know, talking about fears, you seem pretty fearless. Are there any big fears like you know when you get in the edit room when you're uh, putting your art out there? I mean, are there any big fears that come up, and how do you deal with those? I think the fear is a good thing. You know, um, I, that's what got me to go. The most popular thing we've done so far is this film called American Juggalo about, um, 
insane clown posse fans going to this. They, they all gather once a year. And um, we put that out five years ago. And that's been our most popular thing by far. And the whole thing that drew me to that place was fear, was this like, was like my gut saying like, oh, that's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be dirty. There's going to be people throwing things at you. There's going to be people antagonizing you. And and just, it, it just, it, it felt like, oh, but I learned back then to start trusting that and say, hey, if I feel like that, that'd probably be something I'd want to watch from the comfort of my own home. So I'd appreciate it if somebody went out there and captured it properly. So I kind of use that as as like, you know, I, I use my, my gut barometer and especially when it's fear, feeling fearful as more of a reason to go towards these things, go in and through them, try to understand them more, try to bring back um, artifacts of, of understanding and compassion and, you know, you know, that, and those artifacts are what these are these people's words. It's their essence or their image. So I've used I've used that that fear as the reason to do these things. Oxiana, I was scared shitless to go down there. We were getting death threats before we even went there. We made the mistake of announcing this project before we went to West Virginia to film in this really, um, I mean, Oxiana is a story of a small town of, of people that, um, where a lot of them ended up getting hooked on Oxycontin, this very small isolated town hooked on Oxycontin because all the coal mines had, had been closing for decades and leaving these people without jobs, without purpose and this underground, um, this black market of drugs came up and they're all legal drugs, but it's, you know, the getting them from the doctors, like corruption, on many levels and we were told by the locals do not come down here and dig around in this culture and it scared the shit out of me but we did it and it was necessary and the stuff we brought back I think did crack open people's consciousness when it came to looking at the people in this world that are struggling with addiction so it was worth it as scared as I was I could have given into that and said fuck it we're not going down there I'm not going to spend all my money to go do something where we could be killed or harmed or who knows. But, you know, more and more so I've learned to trust that. The last thing I was just shooting, I'm not going to give away what I was shooting because I, I want to make it a surprise. But one of the days while shooting it, I spent the entire day thinking to myself, this isn't right. This feels off. I don't know what the hell's going on. I've never struggled with these feelings as a filmmaker. I, I'm just like, I'm really questioning to my core why I'm here and why I'm doing this. And when I looked at the footage, all that went away and I understood it. And I understood that it was just me in that moment feeling that fear and great art comes from overcoming that, from transcending that it, and, and being on the other side of it and being able to look at it from a more zoomed out, clearer perspective. So when I feel fear, it's not the only reason I go towards a project, but it is one of the things that draws me to it is if it feels a little bit off, it feels a little funky. You know, because that's just all that is, is a judgment on my part. That is dirt on my lens and it has nothing to do with anyone else. And if I can go out there and challenge that thing in myself, I, I hope that in return, the viewer will challenge that thing in themselves. I love your perspective. I'm not going to lie. I love your perspective. Dirt on my lens. Oh, man, I really appreciate dirt it. Dirt on my lens. I love that. <laughs> OK, last three questions. And they're just kind of quick little questions. Favorite part of this work or favorite piece of this work, i.e. like camera editing, producing. What What's yours? I, you know, I used to hate every part of the process and dread it and now I really love every single part of the process and I'm in the moment for it but the, I think the the part of the process where I get the most joy is being with my editor Kathy and you know those th that sacred time that we get to spend together where where we're deciding how this is going to look and how this is going to feel and how long it's going to be and where we're going to get to use music and how we can best honor these people that were so generous as to be in front of our camera so my, my time with uh, with my editor, Kathy Gatto, for sure. It's like, it's it's my favorite part of the whole process. Just on the flip side of that, and I feel like you talked about it a little bit in fear, hardest thing that you've ever had to do in documentary work? The hardest thing I've had to do, well, you know, the, the hardest thing is making something that was non-existent, existent, turning <laughs> spirit into material, an idea that I pulled from God knows where, and finding subject matter that that can exemplify these concepts. It can be an anxiety <laughs> inducing part of the process for me, you know, where, where you're, you're kind of pregnant with an idea, but no idea how you're going to accomplish it, who the subjects are going to be, when you're going to shoot it, how you're going to get the money to do it, all that stuff. 
because you know for me and i'm sure a lot of i'm sure you can relate with this a lot of artists can when i'm not expressing myself and through my art the the strange feeling starts to creep in like i'm like i'm a piece of shit like like i'm useless uh, like i'm a fraud you know right on the other side of that though is having an idea and trying to figure out what to do with it and sometimes that can be that, that like, like i said that could be anxiety inducing just having an idea and not really knowing where where you're going to turn or or what you're going to do with that um but uh, again i've i've learned to channel that into love and channel that into excitement. So yeah, I don't know. I hope that answered your question, but it's like when you first think of the idea and know that you have to make it and not knowing how or where or when it's, uh, it's crazy. It's a crazy time. No, it does. And that part that you said about feeling like shit, I mean, it's so, it's such a fascinating thing and it's a fascinating world out there when 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 you know sometimes I, from my perspective and I look at your work and I'm like wow this guy does some really great stuff and then to hear you say that makes you so human because you're just I've had those moments when one moment you think oh I'm doing such a great job here and the next moment you're just like oh what in the fuck am I doing here yeah <laughs> yeah I'm bullshit yeah. man like I'm just full of shit here oh, man. Man. yeah it's it's great it's it's I mean I can't think of another art form that I could do that would have me so engaged and um, hold such a beautiful mirror to my soul each and every time, you know, I, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really been, I, I just, I, it's the best medium out there. I, I can't think of a more effective way to express myself and, and channel humanity than documentary. Last, last question, biggest lesson that you've kind of come out of this that you could pass on to other filmmakers to kind of add to their work, whether it be a, a practical lesson or a life lesson? Oh, a biggest lesson? Um, oh, damn. I don't know. I, I it would probably be. I, I'm not going to have like some articulate thing about this because I don't think about this yeah, that anytime often. You put I'm kind of just living yeah, lessons. Should, anytime you put yeah, biggest, that's, but, that's a pretty hefty uh, uh, expectation. But you know, I guess just a, a, a uh, something to yeah. pass on. You know, something of value. I, I yeah, I, I think that you know. Um, a very important thing to keep in mind when you're going to can, going to do this stuff is. Um, your voice that that's like the the artist's voice is the most important thing that's what we're interested in so if you're doing something um that makes you that that makes you look like you're just copying what el what else is out there or or emulating as opposed to innovating question yourself really really force yourself to develop your own voice because man we have enough career opportunists and imposters out there and and people that you know know how to find good subject matter but are kind of fucking devoid of anything in their own soul and don't really know how to get that across like develop your voice develop who it is you think you are and these things will just become an expression of that and you don't have to be super precious about that it's a, it's actually a process of letting go so um yeah don't become one of those posers out there fuck that man people will notice it in the first five frames of your thing if you're if you're bullshit so don't be bullshit and if you are to figure out how not to be bullshit <laughs> yeah guys if this is your first episode with us thank you so much for joining us i want you to join us follow us help us grow help us help each other out in the process